How's it going? I hope you've been able to recover and stop laughing from yesterday's hilarious jokes. I think the pirate one was my favorite. But anyways, today was a good day. I hung out and worked at the office most of the day, but then I got to go to the iCubs game with Mike and his kids, and it was a blast. <laughs> How do you feel about winning a hot dog, Sam? Awesome! I did too. Yeah. Does it taste even better when it's free? Oh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it got one. It's got one too. Yeah! <laughs> you gotta toast your, your bucks. <laughs> free hot dog. <laughs> Where are we standing? Uh, here, Sammy. No. Can I, can I never believe this one's a little bit different. Right? <laughs> Who did you wrestle down? Yeah, yeah. What nine year old did you <laughs> There's a dog pile for it. And this kid. <laughs> Today's devotion is something I think we can all relate to. I think we all at some point in our lives have had this desire to impress or be cool so that others will like us. I remember when I was younger, I was at a hockey tournament and there was this one kid from the other team on one of the other teams that was just bigger than everybody. And his team was really good because he's just used to being bigger than everyone. He can push people off the puck, intimidate them, take it from them, and, and just take it for himself. But I didn't like that. He was slow. I shouldn't have to wait around and be scared of him while he waddles across the ice with the puck. And I was a small and quick player. I didn't lay down many big hits, but I was fast and I could score. So I would go up to this guy and I'd nudge him around a little bit and take the puck from him, dodge his attempts to try to hit at me and then take the puck from him and go and score. But apparently he didn't like that about me very much. And as the game went on, I did that to him more and more and that just drove him crazy. And the way that I knew it drove him crazy was because at one point during the game, I had gotten the puck on our end and I was headed down the ice. I beat everyone and was on a breakaway with a chance to score. And right as I was approaching their bench, this kid, he jumped out of their bench and just stood there with his arms out and his stick across his hands and just cross-checked the heck right out of my neck. And when I woke up there just laying on the ice and I woke up to my dad and the medical team standing there, I realized, awesome, he's gonna get ejected and we're gonna win. Boom, hashtag justice. No, but I tell this story uh, because honestly, at that time, it was so sweet to see him get escorted off the ice and suspended from the tournament. It was the sweet, sweet revenge that I craved at that moment, which isn't how God wanted me to react at the time, I don't think. I think instead of thinking a lot of mean things about him at the moment, I probably should have remembered that he is just as much a child of God as I am. But instead, I decided to just rub it in his face. Now, in hindsight, I probably should have found him sometime after the game and given him some sort of no hard feelings high five or something, but I didn't, unfortunately. And I think it's important in these moments in our lives, at, at these times that instead of reacting negatively, that we ask ourselves the questions or questions like Mike asked today in the devotion. Questions like, what would it look like to release my own need or desire for revenge totally to God and trust him with the situation? And how does it change the way I react to the negative comments and actions of others if, instead of first thinking about the way they perceive me, my first thought is to remember how much God loves me. Because if we did a lot more of that, we would change the game altogether.